Hi, good afternoon. My name is Brett Klein. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer at Codisip. And I'm here to talk to you today about architecting your ambitions with custom compute. So just a quick word about Codisip. We were founded in 2014. We're headquartered in Germany here in Munich. We've got about 200 employees worldwide, although we're primarily located in Europe, and all of our R&D and IP development is in Europe. Um, we're a processor solutions company, so we provide processors and technology around processors to help companies develop their own interesting differentiation in that market. Uh, we were a RISC-V international co-founder, so we were involved in the RISC-V organization from the beginning, and we're uniquely positioned to what we call to provide what we call custom compute. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through the presentation. What I'd like to do though is first give you some kind of history of how the industry's been changing over the years. If we take a look back into the 1980s and 1990s, you can see that the industry was mostly vertically integrated. You had companies like Motorola and IBM and others that not only built their own um, uh, processors or their own uh, chips, but they also built the tool sets that allowed them to build these technologies. As things progressed and we got into more of the 2000 area, you'll, you, know, you notice that companies like Cadence or ARM, Synopsys, TSMC and others came around and we started to have this idea of disaggregation in the market. So what we found was that companies that were building all of their own things to, to go to market started figuring out that it was better to license pieces from companies like ARM or license tools from companies like Cadence to help them get better at what they were doing because they could focus on their specific unique differentiation. As the market continues to progress, what we're seeing are there companies like Apple, Tesla, and certainly a number of others that have started to go back the same direction of vertical integration again, where not only are they building the chips, but they're now starting to build very specific pieces inside the chip and taking ownership of their entire uh, supply chain for that chip. And so this is now OEMs that are building their own chips, and it's quite interesting as you, as you follow through the market. And so what happens with this? We've noticed that uh, companies like Apple or companies like Tesla, we've seen them start to generate outsized returns in the market. So their market cap, if you compare Apple to someone like Nokia from many years ago, the market cap of Apple is about 10x what Nokia achieved at the top. And despite the fact that Volkswagen may sell far more cars than Tesla does, Tesla's got a much larger market cap than, than Volkswagen does. And while you know semiconductors are only one part of your overall story when it leads to your market cap, we think the vertical integration for these OEMs allows them to customize and optimize their hardware to go with their software, and that allows them to have a, a unique advantage in the market. Obviously, it's just one part, and there's a lot of things that go into it, but we think as we go through and we investigate this, you can start to see some trends here that as the OEMs design their own chips, there's really good opportunities for them. So if you're a financial type, what would you pay in terms of you know, an investment to give yourself a chance at improving your market cap by 2x to 10x? What would that be worth to you? And if you're a tech type, it also solves some kind of deep technical problem. I think everyone's talking about the idea that the, all, all the various laws are starting to fail, whether it's Moore's law, Denard scaling, Amdahl's law. You know, after 50 years of driving the market a certain direction and the idea of transistors double every couple of years and performance doubles, we're starting to see those uh, start to flatten out. And so at that same time, now everything's starting to become really expensive in the market. You, you can't just go out and develop a, a three nanometer or a five nanometer chip today. It really takes a significant investment, you know, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars, a half a billion dollars, something like that. And so there's a number of options to go off and address this uh, slowing of the various laws and, and that are out there. So the first one is you could get rid of electrons and you could move right on to photon type computing. And fo or optical computing with photons. So optical comp computing is something that's quite interesting, and it looks like it's very promising, but it's also likely out five or 10 years from now. There's also new materials that you could introduce, so graphene and others. I think this is an interesting area where chips will start to be made out of new things as we get to below th three nanometer and further. Um, but those are also gonna take some amount of time, and it's not proven yet that they'll be the, the really the next generation. Or what we think is you can customize your workload to meet 
uh, to customize your hardware to meet your specific workload. This has a number of different names to it, heterogeneous compute, domain-specific acceleration, or what we like to call custom compute. And so we think in the near term, there's really only one option, and the option is to try to customize your hardware to meet your software workload. And so we're back to this idea of customization again that gives me some unique differentiation into the market space. And this is what Codacip does. So what Codacip provides a, a number of different pieces of technology that are founded and, and utilize the RISC-V open instruction set architecture. So two of the technologies that we'll talk about today are CODAL, which is a C-based language, and our design tool called Codacip Studio. Now first, just a little bit about RISC-V if you don't know it. Um, RISC-V is an open standard that's been uh, supported by over 3,000 companies around the world, I think in 70 different countries now. It's got a modular instruction set, so you can pick the best parts of RISC-V that are useful for your application space. And what you can do is you can tailor the architecture or the microarchitecture to fit your software workload. And where this becomes interesting is that if we're all running on the same processor, then differentiating is quite difficult. But if you're able to customize your processor for your software workload, maybe you can find a performance point or an area or a power point that's lower or better than what your competitors can do. And you end up with some sort of unique differentiator. And so RISC-V itself allows for different types implementations, uh, embedded versus application. You can have standard uh, extensions that are part of the RISC-V standards, or you can do non-standard ex uh, extensions to do something that might be useful for you. And it's also, there's open source implementations, um, and there's open standards versus a proprietary implementation that you might get from another vendor. The technology that we provide in this space is, one of the technologies is called CODAL. CODAL is a specialized language for processor design. And it's basically a C-like language. So if those of you that know C or Verilog, you can look at the CODAL and it's something that's very straightforward to, to read. But it includes items that are unique to processor design. So it's not trying to replace Verilog or VHDL. It really is something that, that is for processor, processor specific. And you can do things at an instruction set level, instruction accurate level, like semantics or the instruction set or define the resources. But you can also do things at a cycle accurate level. So what this allows you to do is you can do quick exploration and then you can refine this language down to the details so you can implement a specific processor from it. Um, it's very compact and expressive. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at similarly written uh, system Verilog, you'll notice that there's, there's quite a lot of lines there. It's a very simple register definition file. Um, the CODAL is quite a bit smaller. It's actually about 3x fewer lines overall. And so this gives you an opportunity to code, quick, code more quickly. It's easier to verify, of course, because you have fewer lines of code. Um, but also, it's just something that's very easy to work with and, and maintain uh, your technologies. Um, we take this CODAL and we actually supply and build our processors using the language. So if you take the processor and, and you license one from us, you'll get it in this high level language, which means you can start to manipulate it and customize it and use it for your own. You can use it as is if you'd like to, but if you'd like to differentiate your product, there's an opportunity. So CODAL goes into our tool, which is called Codacip Studio. And Codacip Studio is a way that you can handle and, and implement custom compute uh, on your own. And so you start with some RISC-V customizable IP that's in our CODAL format. Uh, it's very, as I mentioned, it's very high level, so you can use it quite easily. You can run it in Codacip Studio where you can profile your software against this specific RISC-V processor. So this gives you an opportunity to identify hotspots or find out where your algorithm may have some challenges that would give you an opportunity to customize and therefore improve your performance, power, and area. And then from there, you can create both a high-level model at an instruction-accurate level or a detailed level uh, with a cycle-accurate model. Inside of Studio, there's a number of different tools, but the end of the process is that we generate out um, two very specific things for you. We generate out a hardware design kit, which is the Verilog that represents your processor. Um, it also comes with EDA scripts and a test bench and UVM and some other pieces that help you through the design and verification. And then ultimately on the software side, this is where it gets, gets interesting and unique, is it gives you also a custom compiler. So we support the standards. It's an LLVM uh, C and C++ compiler. You get simulators for both your instruction accurate level and your cycle accurate. You get a custom debugger and a custom profiler. And the reason this is important is that if you've decided to modify the RISC-V, let's say to add in your own AES instruction, 
or something that's interesting for your application, you'll need a new compiler to be able to take care of that. So we generate all this for you automatically. This saves in having an entire team to go off and rewrite compilers and linkers and debuggers and, and so on and so forth. So this is how custom compute starts. You start with a high-level language of a processor, and rather than having hundreds of engineers to design that processor, we've done the hard work for you. You just have to have a handful of people that can go off and modify that processor and develop the uh, interesting things that differentiate, differentiate your product from your competitors. So the reason this is interesting, I think, is that if you customize, you have the opportunity to, cut to uh, optimize your results. And if we take a look at you know, the base RISC-V processor, you might add in standard RISC-V extensions, whether it's for floating point, or there's integer, or there's bit manipulation. There's all kinds of different things that you can do. And what you'll see is there's a trade-off between area, power, and performance, depending on what you've implemented. Um, but if you go through and you add custom instructions, you might find that there's a point off the curve that gives you something that's unique in your area. And as a matter of fact, there's this optimization space that you can think of. So rather than taking a processor right off the shelf, which has a very specific PPA, power performance and area number, which everybody gets access to, I can now investigate this entire space and see which one, which, which part of that optimization space is best for my application. And I don't have to choose it right away. I can, I can spend some time uh, looking through the space and researching the space and really finding out what's best for me. And what's best for me may be different than you know, what's best for you, because there is no best PPA. And so we've done an example of this. It's a quite a simple one, but we're demoing it in our booth today, and you can take a look at it. This is a, f a fur filtering application. So what we did is we went through and we profiled the fur filter, and we found an opportunity where you could add in extra hardware in the form of a custom instruction, and that would give you a situation where we were able to reduce the runtime by 96%, reduce the overall energy consumption by 90%, because it doesn't run quite as long, now, it does have a cost to it. In this case, it's 36% area. And for your design, that may be perfectly acceptable. But there may be other points that you can find on the curve that only cost 2% area or 5% area, depending on what's most important to give you your unique uh, differentiation. And so this is an opportunity to go off and get you know, exceedingly large performance gains for potentially small area results for the, to, to differentiate your products. Um, if you'd like to see this, it's using our award-winning uh, CODASIP L31 processor. We won an award last year at Embedded World, and we can show you this in our booth this afternoon. So in summary, uh, the semiconductor laws are failing, and we see some opportunities to go off and use new technologies to go off and address the, um, the performance benefits that you might need down the road. Um, custom compute provides an extraordinary opportunity to differentiate your products. And you've seen these types of things in market leaders around the world. But they're also in smaller, smaller uh, products that are in your hands today. And so if you can find a way to add to, the, to a processor or customize your hardware, you can then differentiate your products. Our, our approach is unique. You know, not only do we leverage the RISC-V standards and give you an opportunity to really own your own destiny by owning uh, your RISC-V processor, um, but we provide this idea of architectural ownership too. So when you license one of our products, you can modify that architecture any way you want to. And there's no requirement to give it back to us. That architectural license is yours, and it's part of the, it's part of the overall process with us. And ultimately, what you need to do is you need to deliver differentiated results. You either need to be able to build these processors faster, which will help you do, or provide an interesting PPA data point. And so we like to call this architecting your ambition. And so it's time to architect your ambition. Uh, as Darwin has said, you know, it's not the uh, most intellectual that survives. And so I'll let you read the whole quote. But basically, you need to be changing to your environment. And we think this is an opportunity for you to do that. So thank you for your time today. Uh, we'd like you to architect your ambition. You can come by and see us in Hall 4 at Stand 565. And if there's any questions, I can take them now. Great. Thank you.